morning, everyone. I don't know about you, but one thing I didn't see coming about the, uh, the idea that the arrival of the vaccine is a little bit like D-Day in Normandy is that we are seeing this beachhead, you know, the, the, uh, an expanding beachhead. You land and then expands, and now, you know, the numbers of who's getting vaccinated is a kind of a positive, encouraging thing. It helps us kind of root from afar. But uh, just glad to see everybody. I know it's this, this funny Sunday after Christmas, but it is Christmas. It's as soon as Christmas hits, you know, the half price sales begin and everything else. But we're in Christmas season now. We weren't until Friday or, or even maybe Thursday night. But, but this is Christmas season, the 12 days till uh, Three Kings Day or Epiphany on the 6th. Um, just glad to see you all. You know, let's continue to take care of each other with, uh, with watching out for each other by masking and keeping the distance and all that. Um, we're we're kind of grateful for all of our Sunday school teachers and staff who are usually working with the kids. And, and this Sunday is, is a Sunday off for the Sunday school, so we're glad. Glad for everybody who's joining us um, via the Internet, especially our Facebook Live presentation. And uh, just encourage you, if you've never done it before, visit the FCC Hansen org page and uh, click on the connect tab and just let us know you're here or uh, also um, just sit, may, leave us a comment on the uh, on the live stream uh, page there um, still looking for help with, with tech and we really could use people even if it's just a matter of saying hey third Sundays first Sundays whatever I'll do that one Sunday a month I'll help you out we could really appreciate it. use that and appreciate that would help you we'd, we'd appreciate that um, tonight is the glory of God South Shore gathering you can, you can meet there in Kingston um, at Sacred Heart High School. Uh, they begin at 6 p.m. It's also available live on YouTube. Anything else? What is that? And just, uh, just very glad that we can worship together. Good morning. <clears throat> Our call to worship this morning is from the Psalms, chapter uh, 98, verses 1 through 6. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. The word of the Lord. With our lyre, with our voices, let's stand. <laughs> Light of the stable. Let's sing hallelujah. Just a, a, a note so you're not surprised. There are two key changes coming in this song. <laughs> hail, hail to the newborn king. Let our voices sing with our praises. Hail, hail to the guiding light that brought us tonight to our Savior. Ale, hallelujah. Ale, hallelujah. Ale, hallelujah. Ave, Alleluia. Ah, 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 ah. Ah. Come now, let it shine so bright to the knowing light of the stable. Feel close to the child so dear. 
Cast aside your fear and be saved. Oh, hail, hail to the newborn King. Let our voices sing Him our praises. Hail, hail to the guiding light that brought us tonight to our Savior. a good time before they quite sit down for us to just say thank you to Bob and Kathleen for years of service. <laughs> Even if she calls you a liar. Please join me in prayer. Lord, we thank you that we can be a community, that the body of Christ was never blocked by walls. We pray for your Holy Spirit to so indwell each of us and our gathering, that whether we, get, whether we gather in person or by use of media, that we would be indeed the body of Christ, caring for one another, suffering when one suffers, rejoicing when one rejoices. And we give you thanks that we have life because Christ is alive in us. We give thanks for our sister Lindsay Kelleher, registered nurse. Thank you for bringing her through that and that she is there now serving and ministering healing. Thankful that Janet Duffy's daughter, Janine, is optimistic that all cancer has been removed, that things are looking good. Lord, we want to be supporting each other through the times of challenge. And we pray for these who are dealing with, with COVID, for Carol Batari, thankful that she's improving. You'd be with Marjorie Myers, Keith's mom, Janet Duffy's brother and sister-in-law, Stephen Pegg, and her sister, Joanne, all with COVID. We ask you to be with and give healing to Nick Town and, and others in his family that are fighting COVID. So that would be relieved, the, the, the symptoms be relieved that a, uh, it would leave the system and that there'd be no further spreading. Help us to support these dear ones. We ask, Lord, your touch on Nancy Holland, covering from breast cancer surgery, that you would be with Virginia McAlpine in hospice, and for, with Bill Berg in hospice, that you'd be with Gabe Driscoll, Mary Lou's Hall's five-year-old neighbor with nonverbal autism recently having a, a seizure. 
for Louise's friend Beverly. Hold her close. Pray for our dear Sil Sylvia Salas, who's had a fall on the ice, that you help her recover quickly. That you would relieve Brad McPherson of back pain. We ask, Lord, that you would comfort all who grieve. For the parents and family of Twyla Ray, who died at age 31 from COVID. For Annette Meninato and her family, as her dad has passed. Pray for healing for her mom, also from COVID. We do thank you, Lord, for the years of service that Bob and Kathleen have given, how they have really helped shape this church. And we pray that you would be with them. We'd be glad for every time we get to see them, but we know you are moving them toward new places. And we ask your richest blessing upon them, your guidance upon all things that are concerning them as they move. We pray, Lord, for our Youth and Family Ministries Leader Search Committee, that you would give them guidance, that they would really walk in your ways, understand your will, that you would lead them, that we might have the leadership for these ministries that are needed, for music ministry as well, that you bless and expand and bring new people our way. Ask, Lord, that you would help our family as we travel to Florida with a moving venture, uh, kind of a preliminary taking care of some things, that you hold us in safety. And our son-in-law, as he flies in just a couple hours. Lord, we do pray that this time of traditionally Christmas gatherings, that you would help us to be wise and that this would not be a time of further spreading. And that you would that you would relieve this land and the world of the blight of this. There are things we can do, but there are things we depend on you for, Lord. And we ask that by all means, you might relieve us. But that we would all be the wiser for it and recognize this world is not our home. Lord, would you grant us stability in our government, would you give guidance and wisdom to all those who have authority? And would you cause all those with responsibility to act with justice and integrity? Thank you, Lord, for the opportunities you give this church to care for those who struggle with, with uh, an insecurity of place to live or food. And we do ask, Lord, that your mercy would be upon those who do not have what we enjoy. Pray, Lord, for those who are dealing with worry or fear, whether because of the COVID or other issues, that you, even if we are separated from one another, that they would know indeed that we are never alone. Thank you, God that at every turn you are eager to love us with your stubborn, determined, never giving up love. And help us to be messengers of this, ministers of this, in the opportunities you give us. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One thing we've done a little differently now that uh, Sarah Fuller worked up for us, if, if you, those of us who are in, in the sanctuary now, if you look in your pews ahead of you, you might see a little card uh, where the Connect cards have been that has uh, what we call the QR code, that uh, if you have a smartphone, you can click on it and you can make your offering that way. It's a little, uh, little tech for us there. 
and you no longer have the excuse of, oh, I forgot my wallet, you know. <laughs> Got your phone, buddy? Okay. No. Mostly kidding. The, uh, but thank you to everybody who gives by whatever means you give. Um, and just a reminder that you can use the donate tab on our website, that you can mail them to 639 High Street in Hanson, and that uh, there are just different ways here. There are baskets in the back. Um, is there a special music? No, I didn't think so. Let's go ahead and offer these in whatever way we give. Let's dedicate these gifts to God. Thank you, Lord. You do supply every one of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And you want us to care for others. Help us to do so and help these gifts to care. To bring spiritual food and physical food. Help us to be ministers of healing. And help us, Lord, each of us, in the use of all that you give us as resources, to show that we belong to Jesus. Like him, help us to give of ourselves that your kingdom expand. Would you please consecrate the gift? Would you consecrate the giver? that all things bring honor to Jesus in whom we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me and we'll sing this doxology. It's gone. is from Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 through 12. Long ago God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days he has spoken to us by a son whom he appointed heir of all things through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. But of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. And the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has appointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth and the heavens, are the work of your hands. They will perish. But you, 
remain. They will all wear out like clothing. Like a cloak, you will roll them up, and like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. The word of the Lord. I also want to read to you from the prophet Isaiah. This is chapter 62. Verses 6 to 12. Upon your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted sentinels all day and all night. They shall never be silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest. Give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem makes it renowned throughout the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand, by his mighty arm, I will not again give your grain to be food for your enemies. Foreigners shall not drink the wine for which you have labored. But those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord. Those who gather it shall drink it in my holy courts. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up an ensign, over the peoples. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to the daughter of Zion, see, your salvation comes. His reward is with him, his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall be called sought out, a city not forsaken. Now you're wondering what I'm doing. How hard 2020 has been. You know, last Sunday night during our dialogue sermon, Sarah had a part where she listed off some of the calamities that have happened since 2020. And since then, we can add erupting volcanoes. No joke. Some of you would add the Patriots not making the playoffs. My Red Sox fared no better. And at the risk of speaking a local heresy, sports are not significant life-threatening troubles. Volcanoes, on the other hand, have been known to leave a mark. Hard times are nothing new. If anything, it is unique that they, are, that they are unique and new to many of us. As we come to the end of this momentous year, let that sink in. World history is a revolving door of troubles, but America, during most of our lifetimes, has been spared a great deal. You really have to go back to the Great Depression or maybe World War II to find a comparison on a large scale. That's a long time. You know, nothing to watch on television is not a catastrophe. Plague, poverty, war, and oppression are serious obstacles to overcome. During the holiday season, I'm sure you've seen it like I have, many broadcasters air little messages from their on-air talent wishing viewers or listeners peace, love, joy. I was surprised and rather disappointed to see a 30-second piece on the Weather Channel called Forecasting Hope. And one of the regular meteorologists spoke about how important it was to have hope when you go through hard times have a solid belief that things are going to get better. And he stopped there. He gave no clue how or where to find that hope. That 
what he called that solid belief that things are going to get, get better. By whistling in the dark? This is supposed to be helpful. And I wanted to say, excuse me, Captain Obvious. Everyone knows it's good to have hope. But who out there is offering a hope strong enough to support us, strong enough to stand on? To quote, to quote the great prophet Tony Tennille, Young and beautiful, someday your looks will be gone. Wealth can disappear. Health can evaporate in an instant. When we go through hard times, we recognize the limits of our resources. We're only so strong. We're only so wise, if at all. We only have so many resources. And up against such enemies as plague, poverty, war, and oppression, we are effectively powerless. But this has happened before. Walter read to us from Hebrews. Jewish Christians spread throughout the Roman Empire in the first generation of the church were cut off on both sides. Their Jewish community kicked them out of the synagogues. While the Roman Empire, which had been willing to grant special dispensation for the Jews to practice their faith, because the Jews had been an early supporter of Julius Caesar. The Roman Empire now treated the Christians as guilty of blasphemy against the Roman emperor worship. So they were stranded. The author of Hebrews was intent on reassuring his readers that they were secure because of the surpassing excellence of Jesus, who has come to them and for them and now reigned in heaven on their behalf. Reigns in heaven on our behalf. And this fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah, who tells them that God will stop at nothing to rescue his people, to redeem his people, and to establish his people, to make stable. We are never alone. Today I want us to see the solid reason for hope that is ours as Christians. That we are grafted into the family of God. You know, God is strong and true. Nature and history combine to testify that God is working his purpose out as year succeeds to year. A native of the Bay State, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, America's fireside poet. He's famous for Hiawatha, for the courtship of Miles Standish. But he didn't just, you know, gild the lily. He wrote the lyrics to the beloved carol, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. A continuing relevance of this carol is witnessed that Casting Crowns, a great popular Christian group today, recorded the words to a new tune. And I'm going to invite you to just stay seated, but let's sing the old tune together. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, good will to men. I thought how as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, good will to man. And in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, good world to man. And I want to stop there for a second. You know, with pandemic deaths on the rise, we feel 
the pressure creeping up on us. You know, we know a vaccine is on the way, but we wonder if we can last. And both for the short term of our dealing with COVID and for the long term of all the obstacles that we will face, we need to hear the witness of the gospel. And that witness is symbolized by church bells. And we hear it in these next two verses. Then peal the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail. With peace on earth, good will to men. Till ringing, singing on its way. The world revolved from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chant sublime of peace on earth, good will. God has made it clear that because of Christmas, we are never alone. Our reading from Isaiah has a prophet speaking to a people who feared they were forgotten. The irony and the tragedy that threads throughout the history of the Jews is that they are God's chosen people, yet they are repeatedly the victim of hideous persecution. You may remember in Fiddler on the Roof, Tevye saying, Lord, I know we are the chosen people, but couldn't you choose someone else for a while? Nonetheless, Isaiah speaks hope to his people. Their disobedience was at the root of their suffering, the suffering they were going through. But there was a reason for them to have a solid belief that things were going to get better. They had a reason. The dependable reason was that God was with them, that they were never alone. I could translate those last two verses of the Isaiah passage like this. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed to the ends of the earth, say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your salvation comes. Behold, his reward is with him. His wages come before him. And they will call them, the people of Israel, the holy people, those who for whom the Lord has served as kinsman redeemer. And then speaking directly to them, he says, you will be called sought out. It could be valued, uh, not left to your own devices. You will be called a city not left to rot. You know, when Job, in the midst of his trial and suffering, was inspired by God to cry out, I know that my redeemer lives. He was testifying that no matter even if all the people who were supposed to be able to depend on, if they all deserted him, he knew God never would. The role of the kinsman redeemer is a sacred duty. It was the Bible's version of Social Security. God promised exiled Israel that he would look after them. He would serve as their kinsman redeemer. He would bring them back to the promised land. And he did. But that promise was only a dim foreshadowing of how Jesus came to be our ultimate kinsman redeemer. Blessed redeemer, Jesus is mine. He came to rescue us from the calamities of our brokenness. Bring us to his eternal, beautiful home. Our privilege and challenge as Christians is to be grafted into the family tree of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for whom the Messiah was born. Say, of all the characters in the Christmas story, how often is it the innkeeper that we identify with? I think a fair bit, really. I'm going to read this one. The innkeeper wasn't hurting for business, but he was overwhelmed. The government had decided they wanted a census, and the way they drew it up, sleepy little Bethlehem was swamped. But in his desperation to be successful, 
the innkeeper passed by the most significant opportunity of his career. Think about that. In his desperation to be successful, the innkeeper passed by the most significant opportunity of his career. The next carol I want us to sing together has a wonderful message and I believe a real soaring melody that's fun to sing. The language, though, is archaic. And, but rhyme and rhythm don't work if you try to modernize the words on this one. Instead of saying, you left, it says, thou didst leave. And let's get, that, let's get over that. Let's say that together, thou didst leave. Ready? Thou didst leave. Yeah, it wasn't too hard. The hard question for us is what this hymn keeps bringing back to us. Is there room in our hearts for Jesus? This is not a carol that you sing to other people. This is a hymn we each sing to God. And I invite you to make this your prayer as we sing it together. Thou didst leave thy throne and thy kingly crown when thou camest to earth for me. But in Bethlehem's home there was found no room for thy holy nativity. Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. Heaven's arches rang when the angel sang proclaiming thy royal degree. But in lowly birth did thou come to earth and in great humility. Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. The fox is found rest, and the birds their nest in the shade of the forest tree. But thy couch was the sod, O thou Son of God, and the desert of Galilee. O come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. Thou camest, O oh Lord, with the living word that should set thy people free. But with mocking scorn and with crown of thorn they bore thee to Calvary. Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. When the heaven shall ring, and the angel sing, and thy coming to victory, let thy voice call me home, saying yet, there is room, there is room at my side for thee. My heart shall rejoice, for Jesus, when thou comest and calls for me. Elizabeth Toole is a woman who who, as a girl, moved with her family to the mid-Atlantic area of our country, in a rural area. And they found a church they wanted to join, but it didn't have a regular meeting place yet. They were kind of finding a home. They tried meeting in a movie theater for a while, but they actually outgrew it. It was time to move on again, and the church found a home. Through the generosity of a community member, Elizabeth wrote, this time we were shuffled to an old gray bar. There was not much to look at, but it served the purpose in our active, hardworking, still-growing community, 
gathered at this rustic spot, now filled with folding chairs. And it made me kind of think of a few Sundays out in the backyard, especially as we got a little chilly in autumn. In autumn. And we can appreciate for these folks that as it got colder and colder, it was hard to keep the children warm during the services held in that drafty barn. And the children groused a little every Sunday and were especially reluctant that Christmas Eve. But when they got there that night, they were surprised. The old gray barn was no longer just an old gray barn. It had been transformed into a nativity scene. A real one with a real manger and a real sheep, a real cow and a donkey. Hay was everywhere. The eyes of children were filled with sheer wonder. And amid the animals were people. The woman wore a blue robe. The man was in an old brown sackcloth tied with a rope. He held a staff. She held an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes. They were not just people. They were the holy family. They were surrounded by shepherds tending the flock. Instead, I realized I'd never thought about what the first Christmas smelled like. I don't remember what the music was, she says, if there was any. I don't remember what the evening's message was, if one was given. Don't even know if we stayed warm enough. But I do remember being in the presence of the true spirit of Christmas. God's love was humble, but real. It was magnificent. That Christmas Eve celebration could have lasted forever. We finally left the barn to find that snow was lightly falling and the stars were announcing the birth of Jesus. We all felt a silent joy at the miraculous event we'd been witness to. Nothing ever came close to that Christmas Eve of wonder with Jesus in the old gray barn. Have you ever pictured how the Son of God so thoroughly entered human life, you know, baptizing our rural roots with angels, with wise men, and himself. When we grasp it, we begin to grasp that there is no length God won't go to to make sure that you, that any of us, are never alone. I was realizing there was an absolute favorite Christmas carol that we hadn't sung this season, so I'm, I'm out to rectify that. And it's funny that because this one is so popular, Thou Didst Leave sounds like a foreign language, but Gloria in Excelsis Deo doesn't. Why should we sing glory to God in the highest? Well, because we're never alone. All right. Now you can stand for this one. <laughs> Excelsis Dei. 
stop at nothing to rescue his people, to redeem his people, and to establish his people. Jesus came for you. For you. Embrace him as your Savior and join the company of the confident because we are never alone. In excelsis Deo, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. And our closing song is Good Christian Folk Saints. What is it? Good Christian Friends. Good Christian friends, rejoice. Got that one, Frank? You don't? Oh, you don't? Nobody got that one? All right. Just one second. You got lyrics, right? All right. Good Christian friends. One, two, three, six. Carol, you better come up here. <laughs> Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give ye ear to what we say. Jesus Christ is born today. Ox and ass before him bow, and we are in the manger now. Christ was born today. Christ was born today. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye hear of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. I has opened heaven's door, and ye are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Good Christian friends rejoice with hearts and soul and voice. Now ye need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save, calls you one and calls you all, will gain his everlasting all. Christ was born to save, Christ was born to save. Let's pray. God, remind us always that we are never alone, that we may be people who rejoice 
rejoice and that we proclaim to the ends of the earth that your salvation has come. Go with us. Go ahead of us. Be always near. And may we bring honor to you as we walk in faith. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Go in peace and Merry Christmas.